Welcome to the West Ham Voice. Thank you for joining me on a Thursday afternoon uh, or whenever you're watching this. Um, going to talk a little bit, not so much about specific transfers, but about the transfer policy at West Ham United at the moment and what might be going on. Um, we hear an awful lot of stuff uh, in all the social media, etc., as to what players were after and so on and so forth. But I wonder what's going on in the background uh, uh, because... Um, we're not quite sure, are we? We're not quite sure. I, I keep talking about, um, have done quite a few times, about David Moyes and his dithering approach to uh, transfers. Um, but it seems quite evident that Moyes has identified targets, but for some reason or another, we're not getting them through the door. Now, in his uh, post-match interview against Rangers the other day, he cut, he cut quite an unhappy figure. Um, he shared his frustration over the lack of uh, movement in the transfer window. Um, and only at the beginning of the week, you know, we're all, spe you know, we're all quite kind of cock a hoop uh, that we were looking at Lingard, Broja, Anana, Skamaka, all these players, and even the co even a left back uh, coming into the club. Um, and had that happened, uh, seven players signed within the space of uh, a few weeks in the transfer window uh, would have been fantastic and incredibly good business for us, and it would have really set us up for the season ahead for our pre-season and so on. But we've only had three signings so far. And then everything else seems to have come to a standstill. Uh, as it stands, we're the, uh, we are the eight highest spenders in the Premier League, believe it or not. Uh, however, aside from Manchester United, all the teams around us, above us and just below us, uh, have, uh, you know, have done some serious business since the, uh, since the transfer window opened. In his interview, Moyes said he was disappointed with a number of things during the game. Uh, he said the defending wasn't good. He also, he also reflected on the uh, lack of attacking prowess uh, and that we had no sort of cutting edge up front. He also talked about the fitness. When he was asked the question about uh, whether he thought uh, the players were at the level of fitness that he was expecting, he actually said no. He said, uh, you know, he said we were not as fit as we should be at this stage. Um, but he, he, also, he talked about uh, Rangers being fitter and sharper than us. Um, and he talked about us not being pressing enough and our decision making being bad. But he talked about fitness not only in uh, body, but also in mind. You know, we were we were lacking that that sharpness in, in, the, in our thinking about the game, etc. Then Moy said very clearly that uh, he had to make changes and they had to happen very soon and something different had to had to be uh, brought in. It was clear from this, uh, and you could see on his face he wasn't happy, that uh, not having more, uh, that having more work to do in the transfer market uh, was evident, and not having enough options on the bench available to him was quite frustrating as well. He then said that we have a number of bids in for players, uh, but given, the, uh, but uh, getting these players over the line was proving difficult. So. Why is it so difficult at West Ham United? You know, you look at other teams and you kind of envy them. And I'm not saying that uh, just because other teams buy 10, 12 players, etc., that they're going to do well. But you kind of envy the approach that, or, you know, you look at other teams, uh, Aston Villa, Nottingham Forest, other teams like that. They target their player, the players that they want and they're through the door pretty, pretty sharpish. So what's going on at West Ham United? Look. He made it very clear that from what he's seen so far, we're needing to add to the squad that we already have. It was the clearest sign yet that Moyes is cutting a very frustrated figure indeed. He said that he wanted to do his business early, didn't he, a few, uh, a few months ago. He wanted to do his business early. Uh, and yet it looks like a slog. It looks like the transfer window is going to go right up to the last day. We may end up signing one or two players, you know, in the dying moments of the game, of the, um, of the transfer window. So given that Moyes wanted to do his business early, given that he has confirmed that we have a number of bids in, why are we yet expe uh, experiencing such difficulties in getting the players over the line? Well, when the season ended, I did a review on the types of players that David Moyes was going for. And, uh, you know, if we reflect back on the type of players that we were linked to at the time, uh, the likes of uh, Phillips, uh, Lingard, of course, uh, Darwin Nunes, uh, uh, Ward Prowse, and all of these players, bar one, 
well, we, we expect one to go very imminently. All of these players, bar one, are at other clubs now, to the clubs that uh, we were uh, they were at when we were looking at them. So if these were the first choice, then what next? Then we start looking at the second choice targets. I mean, I'm not don't want to be unfair on them, but in a way, these probably are the second choice targets. Brereton, Brereton Diaz instead of Lingard, uh, Brojar instead of uh, uh, Nunes, um, Onana instead of Calvin Phillips, etc. But nonetheless, these players are good. These players are good. But even these ones are now proving difficult to get over the line. So what's going wrong? Then we kind of almost look at almost the third choice players. You know, there's um, uh, Mangala instead of uh, 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 Onana. Uh, there's uh, Dwight McNeil instead of, uh, you know, someone out on the on, on the left side, attacking side. And there's still the hope of uh, Diaz coming in. But even that is taking quite a long time. Then we look at all the left backs that we've been linked to. We've gone from David Ram to Luca Pellegrini uh, to uh, Bosa um, to Sosa, etc. Uh, and then even that is is just not happening. So what is going on? Well, funny enough, we were told that um, you know quite a long time ago that all the transfers were in direct charge of uh, Moyes and Newman. Uh, the head of scouting. We were told that uh, they were in control of who they were targeting, who they were going to deal with, uh, negotiating uh, deals, et cetera, et cetera. But now we hear uh, only the other day, and it wasn't for the first time, that Karen Brady uh, was involved in discussing, having discussions with uh, um, Todd Bowley, the Chelsea owner, the new Chelsea owner, about the deal for Brojar. So is it Newman and, uh, and Moyes or is Brady involved? You know, who else is involved in the transfer targets? You know, um, apparently this was all, all about, um, you know, Brady was talking to Bowley and a 30 million pound figure was suggested for Brojar. And then all of a sudden we found out that other clubs were being quoted 20 million, et cetera, et cetera. It's all a bit odd, isn't it? Because now we're quite a, a little bit sort of confused what's going on in the background. And is this the issue that that's actually holding up our, our bids, getting the bids over the line? Look, we were told that we had roughly about £100 million to spend. And we were also told that um, uh, Daniel Kratinsky would sort of top that by around about £50 million. So we were, we're expecting a figure of, there or, give, give or take, £150 million to be spent in the transfer market. Give or take. Um, if, we, if those bids that are outstanding for Skamaka and for uh, Anana, Skamaka, by the way, is still there. If those bids uh, are actually realistic, of they get so they come to about sixty-five million-ish pounds altogether. We've already spent fifty million. We know we start into eating into Kratinsky's fifty million pounds. We've spent fifty million, another sixty-five million on the cards, and other players to come as well. So, does it mean that Kratinsky is sitting back and just allowing his money to be spent in any way that uh, we want? Or actually, does he have a little bit more input uh, than we think? You know, Kratinsky's been a bit of a silent partner so far in, in the whole issue. And uh, and we we do wonder. I mean, if you're investing a lot of money in, in, a, in a club, you know, you're giving West Ham United a lot of your money. Do you not have a say? Do you not have any input? You know, could it be that maybe Kratinsky is looking at uh, how we're planning to spend his money and maybe saying, well, no. I don't think I want my money spent that way. Could it be that Kratinsky doesn't like the targets that David Moyes is going for? Is that a possibility? You know, Kratinsky, um, Moyes would have uh, said to the board, here's who I want. This is what I want. Go out and get them. And if it's getting to the point now where spent, we're spending Kratinsky's money after the initial 100 million, does he have a say or does he not have a say? Is he as silent a partner uh, uh, as we think or is there, is there more to it uh, than meets the eye? And what happens if? What happens if, for argument's sake, the board or Kratinsky or whoever it may be uh, turns around and doesn't like the targets that David Moyes is going for? Will they hold that back? Will they hold back the opportunity to sign those targets? So, again, it's kind of confusing, isn't it? You know, I've been very much on the back of David Moyes saying he's a pro procrastinator, he dithers, etc. But if he's all, if we've got all these players that we're linked to, OK, a lot of it is uh, rumour gossip. You know, a lot of them aren't true. We may have made a, a, a quick inquiry for one player or another, but not much mileage in it. But if Kratinsky, but if we, if they, a lot of the targets are realistic, then what then? You know, I've kind of said, haven't I, 
We looked at uh, some of the targets that we went for initially, you know, top choices. We wanted Phillips. We wanted Lingard. We wanted Nunes. We wanted War Prowse. I mean, look at that. That's 50, 100, uh, 110. That's about 180 million pounds worth of players there um, that we would have gone for. That it, Had we got them all, of course not, but 180 million. But then you look at sort of the second choice. We're looking at 30, 60, 80 million pounds. That's 100 million pound less already. You know, and then the third choice targets, we're looking at what? 20, 35, 45, 50 million. You know, the values are coming down and down and down. But nonetheless, we're not getting any of them. So what is going on? You know, why did David Moyes cut such a such a frustrated figure um, after the Rangers game? Yes, the, we didn't play well. That was obvious. Uh, but Moyes, for Moyes to actually come out and say, we need to add and we need to add fast onto the uh, on what we've got. It's evident. He's obviously keen. He's no longer dithering, is he? He obviously knows that we've got issues at the back. We've got issues in midfield. We've got issues up front. We need more cover. We need at least another three or four players, minimum. We need a left back. We need another midfielder, an attacking midfielder. And we need a striker. He knows that. But I wonder if the board are backing him in the way that uh, they should be. I've kind of like, not defended the board so far. I've always kind of said, from what I've understood, I've always said it seems to be on Moyes' um, uh, uh, up to Moyes, you know, who he gets. And if he's not getting anyone, I was quite critical of him in the January transfer window for maybe not going for the sort of targets that maybe we should have done. Uh, but now we're in we're in uh, July, we're in this summer transfer window and things are very, very different. What is going on? Um, I guess we're going to find out over the next few days. We're hearing that Lingard is about to sign or he's having his medical and not in on Forest. That must have been an utter gutter blow for David Moyes, having followed the guy, you know, apparently they're, good, you know, they're, they're close to each other. Uh, apparently um, uh, Lingard and and, and, um, and Moyes still have an apartment in the same building in East London and all that sort of stuff. So he would have been absolutely gutted to hear that we're not getting that player. But that puts David Moyes in a, quite a predicament. Does David Moyes turn around to the board and say, break your wage structure, I want Lingard? Or does he say, no, the wage structure is right, you know, otherwise we're going to have unhappy players, etc. I mean, I've got a theory. I, I think Lingard is asking for way too much. If 180,000 or 200,000 or whatever it is he's asking for, he's not a 200,000 pound a week player. I'm sorry to say. Yes, he would have made, maybe made a difference to us, but we do have to look at alternatives. And if David Moyes is looking at alternatives and the board is saying, or Kratinsky with his money is saying, well, no, I don't fancy that player. Is David Moyes being backed in the way that we want him to be backed? Look, we know he's being backed. We know we've already bought players, but we, we've still got work to do. We still need another three or four players to come through the door. You know, what's the hold up? It's, it's a little bit concerning. Um, and maybe a little bit more conversation between Kratinsky, Sullivan, the board, Moyes, Newman, etc., to try and get an understanding of where we're at with transfers would be good. You would have expected that to have happened already, but I just wonder. I guess the next few days is going to be quite telling, isn't it? I know we've still got 40 days to go in the transfer window, but Moyes wants the players now. He doesn't want to wait another month. He doesn't want to wait until the season started. He wants players to come in in order to acclimatise to the squad. You know, maybe get at least one pre-season game. We've got two pre-season games left. And if you can get one or two more players through the door to actually play in those pre-seasons, then uh, maybe we, we might start looking a little bit rosier. I don't, again, but in the mind of David Moyes, I don't know what else is going on. You know, Fabianski played the whole game uh, the other day against Rangers. Does that suggest that Ariola is going to be number two again? I hope not. Um, Downs looked decent. Uh, and then we got the injury to a GERD. From, from where we were sort of singing the, the praises of, uh, you know, the transfer window uh, being good to us with three players coming in so fast, if Ariola is number two, if a GERD is out for maybe three months, and that's what we're hearing, no broken foot, but could quite possibly be out for about three months. Uh, and, and if Downs is going to be second choice uh, to um, uh, 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 Declan and Socek, all of a sudden our transfer window doesn't look as great as what we thought it would. Three signings, one, one of them being a backup, one of them injured for a long time. Uh, or two of them being a backup and one of them being injured for a long time, says to me that there's so much more work to be done. 
I just hope we sort this out. I hope there is no, I hope there are no blockages. You know, I hope uh, a blockage, say Kratinsky's money is not being blocked, et cetera, et cetera. And I hope we can back Moyes and get him to get the players in that we need. Look, if you're new to the channel, uh, please hit the like and subscribe button. I'll be back again with more. I'm sure there's going to be more transfer stories to talk about over the next few days. So I'll be back to, to be discussing those. Uh, I do the West Ham Weekly on a Monday night. Uh, it's a live show uh, where uh, um, you, the, you, the viewers, uh, talk, uh, you know, you, you give me your comments, etc. And we discuss those online. So if you're new, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification to let you know when I'm next on. Thank you for watching and I'll, and I'll see you all very soon.